right? Um, uh, this is Takuya, the chain, and then I will switch it to gear. So now we talk about Python, and then especially today, I'm going to show you the um, plotting part of the Python coding, and then a little bit into um, introductions, and then oh, hope this one works. Okay, a little bit about me, and then I'm the organizer of this uh, data science meetup here. And then I'm a Japanese scientist working here at the Cleveland Clinic. And I do not have any programming background or computer science background. I'm a scientist, PhD, but uh, my training in um, molecular biology. So, but I do use coding every day and, uh, to get some insights into the data or from the data. So I, I don't. I, I want to get insight, so but I don't like writing code that much. You know, it's all it's it's opposite way from coming from the science side. People don't like, don't care about the beautiful code. We care about the insight inside the data. So that's that's how what I mind. And then and then so yeah. So I am more data oriented. And then but I'm, and then I'm currently learning you know, more about you know. TDD type development and as well as uh, version control, you know, which I learned in a hard way that without those you cannot write a productive code anyway. So talk about the plotting. And then in Python, and then historically, matplotlib is the, the the most famous and most frequently used libraries for plotting. And then and then this is the oldest, <coughs> oldest library, and then which was many years ago imported from Matplotlib, um, in a MATLAB. So its grammar was originally MATLAB, but now they Pythonized. So it's completely object oriented, and then it's really people like it. But the problem of the Matplotlib is it's really loadable. And then, for instance, if you want to make a facet, put the multiple figures in a one, one, one page, it's really tedious. Oh, so, so it's a lot of coding. And then, so therefore, I believe that a um, um, graduate student, PhD student at uh, Stanford, generated a really nice, beautiful uh, library called Seabone, which is depending on Matplotlib. But the, and then, and then, and then, but Seabone, you can. Um, plot the beautiful protein with a pure code, very Pythonic way, and then and, um, scientists, uh, including me, love it. We, I use it daily work. But uh, coding side people, programming side people, don't like Seabone because it's Seabone is depending on what protein. But if you wrote the button Seabone, it changed the uh, syntax of what protein. So if you, are do, if you are doing the development, you can see it's nightmare. So loading one library breaks the other code already passed the test. So that's that's the problem. So and then in a in a Python, there's a ggplot that uh, Jim talked about ggplot2 imported ported to the Python. But my personal opinion, and uh, it's it's beautiful, but it's really too much R influence in it. So it's not Pythonic like Pythonic way to call it. I use ggplot2 in R, but then in Python, I prefer matplotlib. So, but then currently, all the plotting going toward to the, and uh, in the plotting on the HTML or more interactive plotting. So, therefore, as we hear, I mainly talk about Bokeh, which is a small new library, which is not released 1.0 yet. They, after 0 0.9, they release 0.10. <laughs> I don't know why, but, uh, but uh, it's, it's still growing uh, library, but uh, it's useful. So I will, I will talk about Bokeh. But the important thing is this plot, basically plot you made from Seabon or Matplotlib or ggplot, you can export to Bokeh. And then Bokeh can transfer and uh, change, convert it to the HTML. So then, if you know really well about Matplotlib, you can just export to Bokeh, so that all your plot go to be interactive. And then, 
this is the bouquet. And the bouquet is a pi and a pi, it's developed in a Python native way, but major library of bouquet is a JavaScript. And a bouquet.js. This is the major library of the um, bouquet. And then Python code is just a wrapper, binder. So then many people, other people, has already developed other binders, such as R binders, Julia binders. So they, they, they get those binders just sending uh, JSONs to uh, Bokeh.js. So therefore, and then Bokeh.js can convert your um, JSON into the HTML, and then you can make it all interactive. So and then, you know, I, I, today I talk about Python Bokeh. But then this library uh, you can use from R or Julia. Okay? And then today I've demonstrated the bouquet and the uh, Jupyter notebook, but uh, I deposited the notebook here. If you have laptop with you, you can clone and, uh, into your notebook now, and then you can follow the instruction with the local environment. Oh, that will stop. Okay. All right. So. We be data scientist or it's Jupyter Notebook. If you're not using Jupyter Notebook, you should you should use it. It's really nice environment. So and then if you are a Python user, and then I strongly recommend uh, install everything from Anaconda. And then link is here. Just click here, and then you can go to Anaconda. You can download the Conda. Anaconda is a consortium, but the Conda is an installer. And you can install everything through that installer. So some some of the libraries here is a bi binary uh, distribution. It's really hard to compile by yourself. You have to bang your head you to, if you start compiling everything yourself, unless you are really savvy computer person. So, but if Conda, if everything is straightforward. You can just install it. Conda installs something, and then Conda will take care of everything. And then, if you, once you install Conda, just write this code, Conda install, okay? Then you can use Bokeh, start using Bokeh. And then Bokeh has a, a really nice documentation. I suggest you to read it. And then, and then so um, you, I, 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 I learned everything by reading this documentation. So let's start, and then, and then can you raise a hand who, who in the audience familiar with Python code? Who, who is familiar? Okay, okay, half does Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so now this is how we usually start the notebook. And then if you notebook, and then press shift and enter, you're gonna run this cell. The first cell usually, um, Loading the or library you need, and then pandas and pi is the foundation of the data science. Everybody use it, and then and then I I download my probability wrong. And then one one trick is if you write this code, everything will be plotted on a, on a notebook. Okay, and then and then yeah. So okay, okay, and then and then output the plotting data. But there is a three way to um, out, um, output. One way is um, write HTML file, and then which is useful if you're working on a front end, it immediately um, export as HTML. And then, or you can export as notebook. Notebook means the Jupyter notebook. I show notebook part. If you exp and output the notebook, all the data will be on this screen, on the same notebook. And then, and then I'll cover a little bit that you, you have to put, you can, you can put an output to the server. So if you want to do some interactive manipulations of the graph, you need to use server. So if, if you're familiar with R shiny app, 
So sulfur is the way to make a Python uh, shiny app like application in Python in a really easy way. Okay, so let's let's start. And, uh, so so just this code is just outputting. Um, I'm telling the bo input bouquet and then telling the bouquet uh, to put to the notebook here. So bouquet's code is really simple and a simple one is simple. So this is just x and y address. And then here, and the figure is a, a class, make a P object from the figure, um, telling the labels. And then just tell, draw lines. And then show, show this object. And then what happens is, oops, this one. And then it show uh, this, this kind of graph. And then, and then, then this kind of graph you can draw in a matplotlib, but the difference is if these little tools comes along with the plot, then what you can do is you can, for instance, zoom in, zoom out, and then you can move the, you can pan, pan move the plot like this, and then, and then change the y-axis interval. And then those kind of things are um, um, immediately possible with Bokeh. And then, and then if you expand output to the HTML, you can have one file which already come along with these tools. You can send HTML file to somebody else. So and then just opening the HTML, you can use these tools. This in embedded uh, JavaScript and in the HTML, so you don't need anything else, and then to read the um, bouquet files, and then you can resize the <coughs> right, and then and then you can zoom in, zoom out, and then you can reset those kind, of, and then to set immediately that simple lines code immediately make it, and then. This is similar to matplotlib, so the only difference previous code and this code is just added this line. And then first, first one, like draw a line, then second one, and then draw a circle. But if you do two procedures together, so you, you're going to write both lines and circles. And then you can see the now lines and the circle together. And then, then you can, this one come, come with the, all the tools here. And then, of course, and then you can zoom in, and then wheel tools, zoom in, zoom out, and the pump tools, like this. And then, um, this kind of um, um, two possible. And then, my, my personal reason why I need Bokeh was I wanted to have some Huber, Huber tool like Tool, uh, tool and uh, in my um, in my work at my work, I'll show you what the Huber tool is, and then uh, <coughs> oh, I just run the code. So Huber tool, let me add uh, this one, and then uh, is you know just this book and uh, draw, draw the bouquet. But the Huber tool, if you put the castle on the point, it will pop out the value of that point. So my, my work, I want to plot the data, so I was interested in the outliners. But uh, in the normal plot, you can see that there's an outliner here and there, but uh, it's really hard to know what, what is them, what this particular dot is. So with, with this method, with this Huber tool, you just pointed it, and then all the containing data will be pop up. So this this only reason I use uh, okay, but it's but it's really useful and uh, for me. And, uh, and uh, this is this is uh, embedded in uh, HTML, so you don't need any server. And then uh, you just the, if you output that HTML, you open HTML any, any computer, you can do this. So you can share this row with others. And then uh, and then. Uh, so, and then this, you know, and then the tools we're talking here, 
And uh, there's many tools, this is examples, but uh, you can just adjust tool as an argument. I mean, you can, you can just tell the object which tool to use as, a, as an argument. And then you can select it. For instance, there is a selection tool like this. You can select like this. And then you can zoom out, resize it, and then you can tap it, you can undo it, and then those kind of order all the tools already available embedded as a JavaScript library. And then, so, which is, which is really useful. And then, then one, one kind of uh, related exporting uh, experiment, uh, an uh, example is, okay, this is simple mat matplotlib, okay? And if you, if you not know matplotlib, I, Loaded matplotlib pyplot.plt, that's a standard syntax. And then matplotlib has a plot uh, functions. And then I just plotted x, y values here. And then you can see the uh, graphs right here. But, uh, but this, this graph is static and it's not interactive, right? So, but if you export this plot, to bokeh, and the bokeh makes it interactive immediately. And then uh, this is the code. It's only only two codes, you know, import bokeh and NPL. And then uh, at the end of the line, and then uh, just telling that I want to show the bokeh. That's it. And then the same code now interactive. And then uh, you can decide that you can zoom in. You can pan in, pan out, pan in, pan in, out like this. So, so if you are already using matplotlib or C bones for your work, this is another way to make your plot interactive. But there's a, there's a certain limitations. If, if the plot is really complicated, sometimes it's spit an error. So, so only. And you can export simpler, relatively simpler. I don't know the real clear line on what, what, what I can do, what I cannot do. But essentially, and conceptually, Bouquet is trying to make your order plot interactive. And then, yeah, so, so then go into the Bigit part. And then, so if you're, if you're familiar with Shiny, these kind of widget are uh, Familiar, probably. So, making this kind of widget, get one line, uh, call the object, and then set the uh, set the values, and then you can make a widget. However, however, and then we we want to interfere the dot and the plot by changing the widget, right? That's what what we want to do. If you want to change the data here like this, I want to respond the graph accordingly. But to do that you need some trick here. Because Bokeh, everything r running on a, on a web, on a web in a web browser. So you need, and then after changing the parameters, and then Python is no longer running on a web. So there's two ways to make it interactive. One way, which I don't like, is that you, you can write custom JavaScript, little custom JavaScript. And then, then web, uh, web application can interpret the JavaScript, so make it interactive. But the second way is uh, and then make a uh, bokeh server. Bokeh server doesn't have to be real server. Your, your laptop can be a um, bokeh server. You can run bokeh server program.